阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。For, for. Uh, today we'll continue with the phrase under shamelessness, um, and this one is about the um, uh, same kind of a concept as we have uh, talked about last time. Uh, and sorry, just a sec. And the um, the topic we used uh, we we mentioned last week. Is you know how people you know understand uh, prioritize on a different thing, and sometimes you know they prioritize on something that doesn't matter, and when time comes, that they um, basically uh, got nothing in return for for the, for all that you know planning, plotting they have. So it's important for us to find out what matters and what. To prevent, so that we don't waste our energy on something that is not、um, important to attain something that is substantial, like enlightenment. So let's not talk too big.、Uh, let's talk about day to day. Those are just a state of mind that you know perverted, perverse, because they were、um, different priorities.、Uh, they put importance on something that are not long lasting. Uh, and and hence they put,、uh, resorted to these kind of、uh, underhanded tactics、uh, to get what they want, you know, for fame, for glory,、uh, that is not theirs. So being a fraud and etc. So basically,、um, you don't have to、uh, pursue this kind of thing. Rather, we need to work on ourselves, work on our internal、uh, self to achieve, you know. Whatever sort of、um, merits and fortunes we want. So today we talk about how to deal with, you know, jealousy. Basically, you know, why would a people belittle others' talent, prevent them from realizing their full potentials? Why would someone cover up their own faults and refuse to admit wrongdoings? You know, it's this phrase literally reeks. Jealousy and why would jealousy happen? Because you know, we、um, have someone have someone you don't have, or someone have ability that you don't have. Someone could achieve something you don't have. Hence, you know, that sort of、um, thought came out. Comparison and、uh, you know, you, you become covered with this kind of emotions, envy and stuff, and it it gives rise to this kind of jealousy、um, behavior. And without proper guidance, it will become an action. You know, actively obstacle,、uh, creating obstacle, creating、uh, troubles for people who are supposed to be able to contribute a lot to the society, to the organization. And the core behind this mindset is because, you know, like I say, the the priorities is wrong. It's, they put in they put in the wrong kind of effort. What's the benefit? To be honest, if we can, you know, stop that person from developing their talents, what's the real benefit? You get you get to sit in their stead, you know, get to sit in their place. But even if you sit in their place, if you don't have true abilities or talent, you will still be encountering a lot of problems, and you can't have capability to solve it. So why torture yourself in that way? Why not you? Why not work with people like? You know, people with talent in that field and actually cooperate with them. You know, and 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 you know, help each other to grow. That's one way. The other way is even you have the talent, you have the ability, and they are better than you. And you know, one might say you can form a rivalry and etc. But as long as you keep each other growing rather than trying to stifle people's development, you know, in the end you still learn a lot more than. What you would do when you're trying to stop people. So when we dig deep down, this kind of you know, irrational and this kind of 
impulse of jealousies and stuff like that is because um it's because it's very um how to say it's it's not aware of how things works you know you, you can't work you you can't work by obs- obstructing people from achieving their potentials and the my mentality in buddhism we call it as wajian which is my uh ego basically attached to your own ego unable to see things as it is hence uh cover up in own delusions and own hallucinations you know those kind of um deluded thoughts uh that cause uh, you to act in such a deluded ways you know clouded muddy ways so the beginning and the cause of all suffering is because of attachment and attachment to this false sense of self you know ego and this false sense of self feeds into whatever your action did and you thought you know if i do this do this i will be able to better myself i will be able to gain advantage but as you understand if you really look at the um longer term and long spectrum of life beyond one life and the cause and effect into this and end up you know all this hard work all these machinations manipulations obstacles that you you know artificially make in front of others just because you're jealous or all sorts of pursuits of you know um short term glory gratification is meaningless in adding more obstacle for you to attain your own peace in a way um so when we go back to this word ego we talk about et- attachment attachment to this false sense of self this body is me this achievement is me this 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 is me that is me and because what is not according to your thought it becomes you know prejudice you know like oh yeah my conception of something is supposed to be like that you know this is how it's supposed to be this is how it's not supposed to be and you become too attached to that kind of mindset you know eating out jiang eating on uh has to be this has to be that end up becoming a attachment and becoming a, a a obstacle and that obstacle is um you know it can be it can go into from ego which is more co- abstract into something more practical uh, into more how to say tangible something you can see which is prejudice 成见, 某人对有成见很深, Someone has a very strong prejudice against some other person or other things or other views, um, you know, because they already have their own preconception behind, and they are not open for, open to see things as it is. Um, and of course, you can't get out of your own shell. How can you grow? How can you, how can you escape the the sufferings? You only recreate the same formula of sufferings to yourself. And then. Um, what you like, what pleases you, you attach to it. You put great effort, significance, pour all the money, energy, all your life force into it. You know, I like this. Uh, this is me. You know, I'm I'm what I like, and you know, can be you know, people that you like, or things that you like, career that you like, uh, the identity that you like, whatever you like. But give very strong significance to it. So that's also another form of attachment, and that attachment causes what we have now. You know, all this, um, all this uh, formation, all this becoming of the world, basically. I If the love is not strong enough, the um, saha world will not form. In this case, the love is mixed with a lot of um, neg- uh, emotions. They are not pure. They are not selfless. They are not, in a way, true love, because true love does not change, no matter what happens and if you are calm down enough and observe what happened really you know among couples among families among uh, relationships it's the best that come out of it is you know obligations and able to maybe i'm too cynical because i don't understand this but it changes if it changes it's not true Obviously, you can you can make it better or something. I'm not going too much into it, but if as long as it changes, that means it's not real. It's not permanent. You know, your perception will change, your things will change, and so so your love is not 
based on solid foundation. It's just emotions and not saying that you deny it, but it is what it is. So how did Buddha, Bodhisattva, or the sages do that? You know, how did they do that that I can't do? The way they do it is they don't use emotions. They use rational. They still have compassion. They still exudes that warmth aura of you know caring and consideration, but they are not using emotions. That means they don't take it personally. They don't make it like me, about me. Um, and that's why it's very important to get rid of the sense of selfless because this is not this is not something you can just immediately do it. If you have like, oh, what about me? What about me? Then you still can't achieve that level. What you need to have is you need to let go of, I mean, you, this is a many lifetime of hard work to, on this. It's not sudden. That's why it's so hard and it's very um, hard to get off six reams because this is the strongest uh, strongest attachment uh, we all have. Pause this with my hair. I need to cut this. Um, yeah. So, you know, the rest, as I say, my ignorance, you know, yeah, what is what Basically, it means I um, ignore. I'm ignorant. Ignorant of things. You know, even though this habit is bad, even though this activity is not good, you still do it. You know, you're not aware of it. You are uh, sinking into this uh, endless hole. You know, you keep going and going and going, not knowing when you will get out. So this is how it works. Ignorance, woman, arrogance. So how arrogant one person is. You know, why would a person be arrogant? Like jealousy. Arrogant means you have something better than others, and you thought, you know, that gives you the credit to be active acting like that and acting as if you're higher than others. That is also another form of affliction because no one is better than others in a longer, longer way. If you say right now, yes, I might be good and this part, you might be better than that part. If you compare using this spectrum, I can't compete with you. Or maybe if I, if I, if I would talk about one view of, you know, maybe career or whatever skill set, I might be better. You know, I might be born with this, uh, abilities and stuff but this is because of the past karma and all the actions none of them is free none of them is free nothing is got free all right so it's just with your work hard you got it you got what you deserve and a person who will gain enlightenment they will eventually reach the state where everyone is equal not because they think like that because it is equal it's the same true nature it's not my true nature and your true nature. It's just we, you know, have like a kaleidoscope I mentioned last time. It was diverted into many, many forms, but the origin is still one. It's the same, you know, whatever object the kaleidoscope reflects, you know, the same object does not change. It's just you split into many, many, many form of existence, of becoming, to become, you know, to become someone, to become this, to become that. And then from, from becoming, it, it gives rise to, you know, ones and have. And then, of course, if you don't have enough merits, you have have-nots. And what you want, you didn't get. And then you become, you know, craving for something you can't get. So it becomes a lot more, how to say, twisted as it goes. And But the origin is still the same. It does not change. Like kaleidoscope. So arrogance is pointless as well in in this form. You know, just debuting the whole point of being arrogant. Yes, you can play Mozart, Sonata, whatever, eight Sonata, ten Sonata, fifth movement, something like that. Or you can play Beethoven, third movement, right? When you're born at the age of one or two. That is very impressive and we should encourage to grow the talent because it's a good good talent, you know, good music. But it shouldn't be the whole of your life. You may be very good at this. What about other part? Are you more caring? Are you more kind? You know, do you know, have you learned how to be a decent person? Those are also very important as well. So it's, it's good to recognize the strength. It's good to reaffirm your ability in this. And in current circumstances, that's what you have. You, you, of course, you want to explore the talent and grow and be confident. But arrogance is not confident. Arrogance is mixed up with confidence. Arrogance is more like, like this one, you know. 
why you can't, you know, let's say, why no one can be better than me, you know. So I want to put you down when you're actually better than me in this field. So that is a problem. Same thing, because I'm very perfect, I can't do anything wrong. So something that I did wrong must be, you know, someone else's fault. So you try to cover up, trying to blame you, deflect it on others. People with self-awareness and understand realities, they do not do that. And people who are in delusion, all forms of delusion, right? Arrogance right? or, you know, uh, fear, insecurity, they will end up doing even more worse stuff on others and themselves, blaming on others, never look into insight. Um, I'm actually incorporating what we learned from this Sunday, that way is easier, two in one. So Buddha story we mentioned, and this one actually leads to that, right? So in this Sunday, we talk about enlightenment and stuff, which I will give a section later. This is a two hour session. But what we have talked with the um, Venerable Ma Wu Qing, you know, this weekend, Melinda didn't manage to catch the call. It's all right, because time zone is really awkward. Um, just going to tell you what, it's it's nothing new or something. It's just a good reminder. So when Buddha was, you know, in past life, right? So the whole story begins with me talking about how we can, how we so helpless in front of our habits. One of those emotions, one of those bad habits. And, and we still seeing ourselves committing the same mistake that we promised not to make and again and again. So Venerable was like, let's talk about a story of Buddha because since we're talking about Buddha story before the session with Venerable. So she talked about Shaimuni Buddha and Devadatta. I think you guys heard of Devadatta before, quite famous. It's kind of like Judas of Buddhism, but um, not really because um, in this case, Devadatta in past life was a merchant, same as Shaimuni Buddha. So the Lord Buddha was a merchant. He is the second merchant and the Devadatta was the first merchant. The first merchant went past a street and went past a you know, household. There's a grandmother and his her grandchildren and they have a pot to sell and they're trying to get some food and provisions. Not indeed, not that much detail, it's just basic provisions, maybe food, maybe stuff. So this first merchant who is Devatata's past life, went past, look at the pot they have, it covered in soot, which is very dirty and used. So he's like looking in detail because he want, they want to exchange stuff, right, as a merchant. So they look at that and then he realized there's a golden innings, linings at the edge of the pot. And he hold it and it's actually made of gold or something, made of very precious metals. Uh, just for, I think it's gold, I think. So it was it was very, um, how to say, a surprising find for him. However, he did not go straight and say how much it's worth. He's like, this pot is old. This pot is worn. So let me, you know, I don't think it's worth as much anything that I can sell you, you know, I, I, everything, um, in my, in my, in my merchandise, uh, your pot cannot afford it. So think about it if you want to cut, you know, the price, sorry. So I'll come back later and see if you're willing to lower the price. Maybe they want to exchange for five grain, uh, five bags of rice, but now they only, he's trying to cut down to nothing, like maybe only one bag of rice. So he's trying to do that kind of dishonest stuff. So he went away, you know, thinking how many profits he's going to make. Basically exchanging a, um, a 50 carat diamond with a bag of rice. So obviously he, he's dreaming, he's hallucinating. He's like, oh yeah, I'm going to earn a lot of money. So the second merchant came across the street. That was Buddha, past life. And, you know, same merchant, but different attitude. He went there and he looked at the um, same household. Hey, look at the ladies like, uh, do you want us to exchange anything? Because it was bartering system, you know, exchange stuff. So the 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 the, the same household give the same kind of a good say, this is all we have. Uh, how much is it worth? So of course he did a look as a merchant, he wanted to see how much it's worth. And he's like, My good lady, this is very, very expensive. This one is worth more than the entire cut of merchandise I'm dragging over here. 
So if you could give me a few pennies to get across the river back to my house, back to my uh, warehouse, I'll get, I mean, I'll get the goods of equal value to exchange with your precious pot. So he, you know, borrowed a few pennies, went back, as he did, as he said, you know, he's a man of his word. And then he just get all the goods combined with what he, what he has at the moment back to the uh, household, the same household, the grandma, and then just like, this is all I have. And this is like exact, maybe a lot, maybe a whole truck of provisions, two, three months or, or some precious metals as well. So exchange for the pot. And then he went back. However, as he going to leave, you know, finish the transaction and he's going to leave, the first merchant came back. And he looked at the he looked at the um the, the same household and said, Where's the pot? Where's the pot? And then he's like, Oh yeah, the second merchant has taken it, uh, has exchanged everything he has with me. So the transaction is done. So the first uh, the, the first merchant was furious. He's like, Why is that guy buying my my goods? You know, he's cutting in my profits. I could have got four hundred percent um kind of a uh, Profits, you know, those kind of uh, mindless money coming in. But um, this guy, you know, really exchanged equal of uh, same goods of equal value with it. I, I am very angry. So he's trying to chase after him. The second merchant, which is the Buddha's past life, immediately hired a boat, uh, the fisherman, or whatever, uh, the ferry, basically, the ferry, man with ferry. And then he just escaped from him. And this first merchant, the crooked merchant, which was a Devatata's past life, stand at the banks, you know, near the banks. He can't swim, right? Even he can swim, he can't raise a boat, right? Looking at the, the second merchant and get very angry, very pissed until he passed away on the spot because he's so angry. So he just fell down and died. So that was his past life. So this, ha this thing happened again and again and again between these two persons. You know, Buddha was always doing the right thing. He, he does not even you know, think about the other person specifically. He's just like, oh yeah, I'm just doing my stuff, you know. I'm a merchant, I trade equally. Or whatever he's, he did, he did it right. But it's always end up with Devatata behind him or before him, who's trying to do something crooked, so being unfair. And end up, you know, Buddha writing the wrongs that he's about to make or he has made, I don't know. But this is one of many stories of their past relations. So the moral of the story is relation to this one is because same thing, like, you know, Devatata was not aware of his error and he always, even in current life, in a, in a sense, you know, this Dharma cycle, Devatata always uh, compared himself with Buddha. He was like, oh yeah, they're cousins, basically. And he's like, oh yeah, this uh, Shaimuni always have you know a lot of students. You know, he has two thousand five hundred students. I only have one thousand. I need more. So he always trying to do the one up, one up ship, one up manship. So kind of like trying to one up the Buddha. He's always falling flat. Mm -hmm. Try, might even trying to kill him as well. But of course, Buddha is full fully merited. <laughs> you can't, you can't. So, so this is this is this is why this is very um. How to say? This is very sad because many, many, many lifetimes, you know, this kind of habit happens. So some, if someone is behaving like that, it's because they already stuck in that mode of thinking until maybe they suffer a lot or they still have that good roots in them. They caught it in the past. They were, they being aware, and then they change their way, and obviously their whole condition will improve. So back to this story also on. The other front is also talking about how hard a habit is to change, right? It's still relatable to this quote, but it's also talking about how how sticky it is your habit is. It sticks with you many lifetimes and also your relationship with other people. It's like Buddha didn't do anything at all in the past life or didn't do anything particular to him. He's just doing the right thing and Devatada happens to be either before or after him. who's trying to take advantage of a situation at the expense of others, but ended up having Buddha trying to do the right thing and did it and taking the chances of him. So he blamed it on him every single lifetime. And this continues into this one. So just need to work on yourself. That's it. 
there's nothing else you you um, need to focus on other than yourself. Only then you can talk about maybe you know trying to work on maybe actually able to help others. Not saying that you shouldn't help others, but you should always look into yourself first before deciding any sort of actions. Am I driven by anger, hatred, even though my actions might be good? Is it driven by tanzhenzi, those kind of attachments, right? If you still have the attachments, your deeds are not clean. If your deeds are not clean, even though you do good deeds, you're stuck in the higher realm. That's it. You're still followable. Which is another important topic we talk about in Sunday. Followable. Six realms is followable. No matter how well your meditation is. If you're not aware, you're not enlightened. That means you're not opening up your wisdom. You are followable. You will fall. Because we still have unwholesome deeds. Or the um, unwholesome thoughts. Mixing in our mindset. Our mind. Our mental space. So it's, it's just a matter of time. Where the right condition come out and pull us down. So, as long as this problem is not solved, even chanting Amitabha is very difficult. Yes, he has very convenient methods. You know, you just need to be vow, you need to believe, you need to have vow, and you need to chant Amitabha. But those convenience should not be mistaken as, you know. There's no rules and regulations on, and there's no prerequisites. No, it, it's it's just a it's just a how do I say? Uh, we need to we can't sever it, but we have to clean it up. We need to we need to pack it in the bag, make it make sure it's tightly sealed before we go to Pure Land. Otherwise, if we keep creating this kind of action. You know, you you just going to recreate your own hell, basically, or recreate your own six realms. When you do the good deeds, your good deeds are not pure. That's basically what six realms means. The thing you do are not pure. You, know, you might be kind and everything, but you have elements of greed, elements of maybe uh, want something in return. You know, you chill, have an ask, and that ask is unpure. I'm not saying that immediately you will be able to do that, but Having something, wanting something in return of what you did is already unpure. And that's precisely why we can't get out of six rooms. Um, and why can't we not do that? Because we are so stuck in that thinking, right? Trading, transaction, we also stuck in, in it's kind of recreating these needs ourselves, right? We have this body, we have these wants and stuff and, and this thing mixing together and and uh, our desires, our cravings in, improve. We want that reputation. We want to have, look good. We want to have this. We want to have that. All these kind of um, demands come into pictures and and ended up, you know, making you more calculative. You want this. You want that. So you need to get this from there. It becomes calculative. Becomes machination. Becomes manipulative. It's even not not everyone's like that, but that's that's basically it. So when you see a truly genuine person really do things because it's the right thing to do and they don't think anything. That's why we're drawn to them, we respect them and we salute them a lot because they don't think about anyone else. I mean, they don't think about themselves. They don't always have me, me, me. Well, like, what should I do to better this condition that everyone's facing? What can I do better to help others? And that's exactly how a person gain merits and fortune. And if they're able to keep it up and able to let go more of their own attachment that I just mentioned, you know, first is the ego as a found, uh, f attachment to the false sense of self. We call it ego in this, in this sense. Then from ego means you expand outwards. The thing I like, the thing I hate, the thing I stuck with, preconceived notions, my, my, my understandings like that cannot change. That's and then form prejudice because you're stuck in one way of thinking. And also, the thing I like, the thing I hate, so give rise to all these actions, you know. And then I'm better than others. Unequal, unequal thoughts, you know. A differentiation or discrimination mindset. There comes racism and all that crap. That's because of that. So all these things rooted in 
ego egoistic um, rooted in a very let's say wrong beginning in a very how does not ignorant beginning ignorant it means not clear ignorant means not clear and once we're not clear even though we have Buddha nature and all that merits just sitting there not moving and if you expand from this ego to outwards the actions giving rise from the ego hate, hatred, ignorance the state of mind is also an action any action you know take more than you need lust after art same gender lust angry but you get triggered a little bit of remark get hateful for someone might be jealous in their actions under seek vengeance or what those things come in factors this is a part of a very human experience and we all need to uh, be aware of. Very nuanced as well. Very subtle, it's very fine. And, you know, the way we cultivate is normal way. One by one. Buff, buffers, momentous, flaws. The really bad temper, that's the first thing you have. Trouble controlling yourself, self uh, self restraint, uh, food, control yourself, diet. But you always chase up after girls because you like sit genders and stuff like that. You really like that feeling, fast and stuff. Then you have this. Yes. Is it better now? Okay, it's, it's because of the mic. And I'm trying to rest while I'm talking. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Auntie. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is, um, this is something we need to ask ourselves, which part we need to start with. And remember, this is a journey that go across lifetimes. It's not, even in Pure Land, is to have to do the same thing with a better equipment with a good care. You just go into a good place that helped you to do that. You still need to work on everything you have. Yes, you don't you will not hear of all these afflictions, but those things with you carry with you underneath, you know, the surface. So you start with the surface, you scrap the surface. That's why it takes many lifetimes, because you, you need to go to the fine you don't even know you have it, that kind of problem. You know, the the, the kind of very fine details, something you can think about because it's beyond subconscious, something that you can't control, like suddenly it pops up. You are fine one day and suddenly, you know, something happened and then you suddenly got into that mode of thinking because you're stuck. So external and internal work against you a lot of times. And, and obviously, you know, the concept of against you is also very important. Uh, we need to let go as well. It's not against you. It's rather it's how it is, or it's it's your karma as well that bring you into that condition. So let going, let, let letting yourself be more fluid and flexible allows you to see things as it is and work your way out of that. You know, you don't get stuck into that one mindset. You know, uh, you commit a mistake and then you blame yourself again and you commit the same mistake, and then this whole cycle continues and. You thought you're changing things, but you're changing nothing. You know the goalpost is very invisible. You can't see yourself very clearly. Like you know, always first person is always blurry than third person. When you someone from the third party sees you from the outside, they can clearly see how you progress. When you're on the in inside, it's just hard. You, you you need friends. That's why you need teachers. You need you need to read the sutra. You need to listen to the dharma. That, that's the whole point, just to remind you, just to remind you of that concept that's very most distant. It's, it's not enough, but it's a beginning. Just have a concept a little bit. And then once it gets into uh, action plan or something that you, the way you th of thinking, way of living, then that's when the real thing gets in. Like that's when you're really actually competing against your behaviors. 
like you want enlightenment, that's the path you need to take. So that's the focus and energy you need to take. Right? Like every day in our life, we if we need to focus right on what we need to do. Um, you know, like people who focus on others will do this, you know, trying to put all the energies into the plot schemes, trying to stop people from getting achievements because they think somehow they can stay on top forever. That's stupid. People will die, right? When you die, how can you stay on top? What we have is only a give you seven inch long piece of land. And then not even that. Give it 20, 30 years, it becomes soil. It becomes a nutrient. So this is not you. The body is not you. So it's stupid to get stuck in there. Of course, when you get into that environment, you might get sucked in. But if you have that course, then it's a, it's a problem. Like Devadatta, you right? Same thing, same scenario, different kind of outlook. You know, people who stick close to their virtues, they understand, you know, doing what is right. And they end up become, uh, becoming Buddha earlier than Devadatta. Devadatta will still be Buddha. Or maybe he is, he's just showing us the negative example. You know, someone's going to be a villain, right? Antagonist. Um, some is Buddha is, if Buddha is protagonist, it's going to be an antagonist. It's how a show can keep going. The show must go on. It is. There is a sutra to talk about that, but I don't want to divert away. But what we can see is he is always, you know, using the negative way of doing things. And hence, he putting himself down, denying himself the same achievement as Buddha. So that is ironic. So people like this work on the outside. They always think about, you know, how do I look good in front of others? Hence, they're trying to cover up. It's normal. We will have that one thing to look good, reputation, in terms of reputation, in terms of physical appearance, in, in terms of, you know, uh, social standings. Those are there. But you don't have to go all the way there. Like, you don't, that mode of thinking, like I say, the ego give rise to, you know, you putting emphasis on something that is not important or something that is not, doesn't matter in the matter of, lifespan you know you, it's a short life give it 100 years it's nothing compared to the universe and once you pass away what do you leave behind right and spending energy on this one means you wasting the opportunity you could have in really making progress this lifetime if you're not meeting pure land or you can't accept amitabha buddha there's still work to be done you want to have a better life no one wants a, better, a worse life right even mafias or the cartels, they want a better life, isn't it? So what do they use? They use violence, they use coercion, they use killings. End up all going to hell. They will burn, they will, they will burn really far. So 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 what's the point? You know, some of them got stuck into that lifetime, they got see bad habits, habits, habits. Those habits are very subtle. You can't control it now. You can't, you just can't. You need to work to make a dent. It's hard. To make a dent in that hard shell, it's hard. So, the energy we need to have is infinite. Hence, you need the help of Buddha. Hence, he has the vow of Buddha. You know. Yeah. If you want to go to pure land, we cannot not let go of our selfishness. Every thought you only think about yourself, every thought because of you only think about yourself, anyone that somehow threatens your social standing or your own perception, right? No one's threatening you. Maybe you'll be like, oh, you, is, you do so good, so you make me look bad. See, this kind of thought might give right? petty, pettiness, right? Petty, that's, that's the word, petty. Focusing on the wrong stuff, the stuff that doesn't matter. And, you know, how, how this kind of mindset how, it's not it's against pure land it's against they won't accept you like, why would I want this kind of person in pure land disrupting every single person over there everyone's pure and everyone's happy over there why why would one why would we want someone like that right. so you even though you might appear as you know very devout chanting person you know you go to temple every day or even volunteers on time but if you still have the mindset of you know competing 
yeah, I want to look good in front of others. I want to have that, you know. Um, 投投一支香, I want to put the first um, incense in front of Buddha. I want to be the best. Uh, I want to one up other people, even in a Buddhist context. You still not go into pure land. Still not go into attain the enlightenment. Maybe you get all the merits, but the merits is always polluted. That means your marriage will always come with a lot of hardships. You won't get what you what you married uh, your fortune easily. Even you get your fortune easily, you can't enjoy it properly. You might use it on the wrong way. Hence, creating more negative karma. Hence, creating more sufferings. Hence, you falling into lower realms. You know, from current suffering into lower realms, and then this cycle happens again and again because you're so used to that action. So this is a real suffering, guys. It's not one off standing here, doing this. It's the continuous repetition of the same behavior and habits that put you in your own position right now that makes you, how to say, unable to get out and you couldn't help yourself as well sometimes. So that's that's where that's where the real reflection is to come in and ask, you know, are you done with this? Are you done? And if you're done, we need to start listening to Buddha. Because if no one else is teaching us how to do that, it's only us. Uh, uh, no one, if we do not have Buddha to show us the way, only by yourself, there are very few people who can do that. They call it Pratyeka Buddha. Yuan Jue, they're able to see the flowers, the trees flowing, and then they are able to aware of the 12 dependent originations, you know, how people become into being, how things come into being and how things unbecome. So how things exist and stop to exist. Some people can do that, but it's very rare. Normal people, no, most people, they need some help. They need Buddha to show the way. They need sages to show the way. All right. So in our context, you know, pure land is all about body heart. No body heart, no pure land. All right. No matter how many Amitabha you chant, no body heart, no pure land. And body heart is always represented by purity, sincerity, and compassion. So is there, there isn't no love, there isn't no care, there isn't no, no, no compassion. It's just the way you use it, it has to be, how to say, pure and clean. Without pure and clean, compassion is not complete. Without compassion, your purity and, and sincerity is not there. You can use it. You can use it. You can spread it. Without sincerity, there is no purity and there's no compassion. It's mixed with greed, hatred, ignorance, with lust, with anger, with egos. All right? And purity is always important. All right? And purity, without purity, we can't see ourselves clearly. We always get stuck with the... Um, we always get stuck, basically. Um, Yes, once you have that body heart, which is the three words, sincerity, sincerity, purity, and compassion, then our action of chanting Amitabha is triggered, is merely the condition that leads us to the pure land. Because your mentality, your person, character is in accordance to the prerequisites to pure land, right? So if we dig deep into it, you know, those quotes and phrases, it's just trying to tell us those subtle mindset, you know, people with um, maybe not as serious as this, but have a mindset of trying to uh, maybe a jealousy and enviousness. Those are showing us that we have so much wandering thoughts and afflictions that we need to focus on, you know, not stamping it down. It's stupid because you can't. I try it. There's no way. It's just, you can't stamp down one by one. It's going to take forever. Well, you pop one out like a whack a mole, you whack one mole and 10 moles come out. All right. Sometimes even more moles coming out. It's not, um, there's, that's a smarter way. And the smarter way is still hard work. You still need to put your focus on the right place. You know, in chanting Amitabha, put yourself in the environment, try to find some sort of Dharma friends. Or if you on your own, you have that routine, you stick to your routine of chanting Amitabha. Any way that you can divert your attention more. So use the method of displacement. Displace yourself with more of that side, 
rather than this side. You can't entirely put yourself out of that because it's just not not practical. Right now, you need to do what you need to do. So you need to find a way in your time, in your space to do this, to contact in Buddhism, to contact with something pure and clean and really tell yourself, I want to settle down. I don't want to chase after sounds, pleasures of sight, pleasures of taste. You know, all these sensory pursuits, I will let it let it be. I will not act on it. Right now, I'm just focusing on Amitofo. Or right now, I'm focusing on the Sutra. And then right now, I'm focusing on doing nothing. The art of doing nothing. It's very important. It's not sitting there and lazy sleeping. You just be there in the present. That's a very famous thing. The world needs that. Everyone sees value in it. Being present means you're able to do things you need it at the moment. And you're able to act on it. You're able to find out what's the issue and able to go on. Or you're able to just be here and not think about anything else. And that's important. Because when you when you overthink, what's, what good does it make to the thing that you think to you who is currently in this condition? Right? So chanting Amitabha 4 is just helping you with that. It's just giving you that tools that, hey, use that name for. If you really can't master the art of doing nothing, right? That means you sit there, you're still quite not. Everything's just coming and just disturbing you, right? Most people like that, right? You, you just can't stop. This thing can't stop. So just Amitabha, Amitabha, Amitabha. When you settle down, when your heart is more pure and peace, your Amitabha will be much more subtle, much more warm and much more uh, smooth uh, it goes with your state of mind your state of mind cannot be muddy if it's too muddy and your kung fu is not there that means your ability is not there you can't you will be swept away by your thoughts you will be acting in accordance to whatever impulse you have and that's when you you understand the consequences because you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing or you keep acting and acting and acting in a certain behavior and you'll be like oh no Oh no, this is against Buddha's teaching as well, against whatever he's thinking. Then you need to go back and reflect what goes wrong. All right, so I'm not too. I think I think I beat. Uh, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Everything is there. Yeah. Hmm. Because. Because right now, if you look at our situation, uh, who can tell us not to do this? No one. It's hard. I mean, you you need to be able to accept it. And we don't have the environment where people just, well, maybe I speak too early. Some people can take it, right? But in general speaking, the, the people can't take in anymore. Even like, you know, look at the school nowadays, people can't take in anymore. You know, the kind of... Um, the kind of a harsh education they have. And and if you want to help them with their behavior and stuff, you need to, you know, expose them to the thoughts. And you know, what we're doing here, what Master Ching has been doing is important. It helps. Um, and like, it's not easy to be sage. It's not like to make a sage, you know, to actually cultivate a sage out of a household, day-to-day -day household. That's the practical way, right? You can't just talk about all this big stuff without real people doing it, making an example out of it. So people who are aware of this, who still have the passion to do this, need to be role model. That's the only way you can do it now. You, just in, in, you can't be, you can't just say no, you can you can't like, you know, like old days, you, you literally can discipline harshly and stuff like that. Not saying that it's a good way, not saying that we should encourage it, but um, to indulge in of, on the other side, you know, to indulge in of the wantons and all that wandering thoughts or, or the desires and needs of the children beyond their needs is also a waste of their talent, a waste of their time as well, because they could have, have could have a struck, could have have a better um, foundation, you know, spend the time could have been spent on having them learn how to self-restrain, how to learn how to regulate themselves sleeping. Just for example, that thing is already gone. And regulate themselves how to, um, you know, sometimes you don't get all your, whatever you want. You need to learn 
you know, to be patient. Yeah, and most importantly, learn how to love and respect your elders, your parents, disagree. And that is always emphasized by Master Xin Kong, by Master Ying Guang, our sage teachers. And because lacking of this, hence they emphasize on it. And to successfully have a household that promotes love and respect needs nothing other than children and family themselves to do the example. Parents need to be, be an example. They need to show how they treat their elders. And the children just learn. That's it. It's nothing, nothing, how to say, rocket science, you know. And same goes for these kind of behaviors. Those things will not happen if they learn to take care of others. You know, they understand that each, like if their parents give you a good you know, teaching and example, talk and act as well at what she say and telling them, you know, your big brother might have this talent, but you also have your own talent. Don't worry about that. You know, help them, help, help others, help each other, nurture that kind of relationship, show it to them as well, how you treat your own siblings, you know, between uncles and aunties, you know, the, the kind of peaceful coexistence, a little bit of argument is fine, but most of the time, everyone's caring about each other. Those kind of environment is where you can create a very good children, a really loving and secured, mentally secured children, right? So most 9.30, to use authority and strength to coerce another into submission, to tolerate war crimes, violence, and wanton behavior among one's subordinates. Yeah. Why is this part of this section? Because it's very shameless. Authority and strength supposed to protect and inspire to, you know, maintain, uh, serve. Basically, you need, you, need, you need this authority so that you can organize something so that they can become something useful. That's why people give you the power, the authority, right? It doesn't matter what kind of system you are. Authority is given by the society, given by the group. If they do not listen to you, you have no authority. That's basically what it is. To make people listen to you, here is the wrong way. Here is the terrible way. Coerced, you know, maybe blackmail, maybe trying to find, you know, some way to threaten them. Uh, some way like if you do not do that, you lose your job. Or if you do don't do that, you will. This 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 this. Very brute force kind of mindset. You, know, you don't listen to me, then you die. Something like that. If you're in the position of extreme power or so this is not how you use authority it's stupid because it's wasting um, everyone's time you know people are here because somehow the circumstances force them to be here would you want to work on a nine to five job every day if you have a chance to have a better kind of lifestyle of course so why make it hard for one another why not make it understandable more enjoyable while you are stuck in that circumstances Authority is used to inspire and authority is given. There's always like that. Doesn't matter what system you are, what kind of mindset we have, what kind of political theory, blah, blah, blah. If people do not listen to you, you have no authority. And to make people listen to you, you cannot use chorus because they might listen to you in the surface because you have the numbers, you have the weapons, you have the threat of their death. But when you weaken, the first thing they would do either stab you in the back or throw you off. I'm talking about hard politics, but I'm talking about normal organization, normal day to day, nothing extreme like that. Same thing. They would just not listen. They would just not do what you wish to do or your vision. And in order to fully understand the wisdom of using authority and, you know, and strength, one needs to understand why 
you have authority, why you have strength, right? And, and what is the value of it? How to be a person in charge? How to be, uh, how to be, how to, in Chinese, 帝王之学, right? Or in, in, in English, how to be a king or how the, the art of kingship. This is our old ancient stuff. In the modern terms, this means how to be a good leader, how to, and then in the more simply way, simpler way, without obscuring the meaning, how to be a role model. Even simpler than that, right? How to be true to yourself that also translate into others, that inspire others. What, what do you mean by true to yourself? How do you be a person who understands your own weakness and strength and able to serve this organization that appoints you this authority and position? or that you somehow inherited into maybe family business or something, or maybe, you know, people voted you to be the leader because you have that ability and talent. So there are, there are, there are many factors, you know, and shamelessness means that do not aware of any of this and just use force. And of course, you know, just because you have power now doesn't mean you always have power, right? People who, have wisdom, they know when to use authority and strength to make merits. That's how it should be. It's like you have a lot of money, you spend it on useless stuff rather than spend, maybe you can enjoy yourself a little bit, you know, a little bit of, hey, make coffee for me for fun. But that shouldn't be the point. The point should always be using it to cultivate merits or in the money term, you're using it to make investment, to make more money, right? So using authority and strength means you have a lot of convenience at your disposal. That means things get done for you on your behalf. And people do that because you can organize things. You can delegate the right person. That's one of the one ones And you need to have understanding of people, understanding of the actual stuff you're doing, understanding of the whole picture and, you know, where are we going? Where are we moving? And, and, um, you know, strength and weakness. Is this person okay with this? Is this person okay with this? You need to liaise between different people. <laughs> in Chinese, there's three ways. And this is the art of, you know, management. And some family household have 800 people, 300 people. How do they manage coexist properly, right? They don't just bow, kowtow and submit. Everyone has their own characteristic. Just because we're in Asian culture doesn't mean we always submit it for anything. It's just we didn't show it. So the point right now is how do you actually make people full, really willing to listen and act? First thing, you need to act what you want other people to act, right? Old days, the leader who lead the army into a battle, they're always in the front. They lead the charge in the front and they rush head long into the battle. Only then people are willing to throw their life because you're willing to throw your life. I'm talking about military terms. Same goes for monk, you know, in the Sangha. If the monk is always on time in the meeting and they always do their own homework, Buddha homework, you know, woman you know, those chanting and everything, and they always, how to say, po- uh, properly conduct themselves, and they're always compassionate. They they learn, you know, they they lead by examples. So of course the fellow monk will always, you know, willing to listen and and get more immersed into the Dharma. Because you are representing the Dharma properly, you know, you're following the teachings. Same goes for you know any organization. You know, you talk about this, you have to do it yourself. So you need to do what you preach first before you talk about, hey, you do this, you do that. You don't need to sometimes. You just in express the intention. People might even understand. All right. So that's how authority and strength is used. So I'm just gonna look further. So yeah. Like Mr. Liao Fan in charge of high power, there's a lot of power. He become a basically a mayor of New York, someone in charge of a very rich and powerful area, you know, with a lot of dignitaries and stuff. He used his power to build bridges, to do infrastructures that actually is useful for the people. Um, he cut the tax. Back then, tax is not. I think U.S. is foul, I think I give one. foul 44 or something, 44K or something. And uh, us, Australians, ATO, Australian Tax Office. It's not like that. It's not easy. They, they, they literally need to cut into their day-to-day food 
you know that you're a farmer right most people are farmer so you plant you get what 10 hectares and then there's 10 hectares you get uh maybe five bushels or five gallons of grain and you need to take one tenth or one sixth so maybe you cut it down to one fifth so that the people can have more food to eat no, not one fifth one one eleventh of the um tax bushels of rice they need to give to the government something like that so he, he used his power to do something useful not stupid stuff you know not trying to uh, trying to gung ho his his ability you know i'm you know like the, uh, i'm i'm managing the city directly under emperor's supervision so look at me man i'm powerful right? i'm the governor general of australia so i'm all oh, this well in modern terms they don't really have real power but yeah you get you get the gist of it um yeah what else what else did they say <gasps> um yeah master chicken went into the Liao Fan's route about how he changed his life and i mean it's important because it talks about how you know like i say authorities people listen to you only then your authority is an authority and strength means you know you you might be in manpower and able to gather a lot of people rally people to a course or something um i mean using a really medieval way of in a modern terms means that people are willing to do what you say and uh, the only long-term way of doing it without using force is to be a role model right i'm summarizing it and also you need to have a clarity of mind you need to have wisdom as well you need to see things before it happens or see a pattern of things when it happens otherwise why they would have, that's why you're in charge that's why you need to understand you need to prepare you need to access what's the problem those are practical stuff that we need to have learned and people with cloudy mind they can't have that people with you know only thinking about themselves they could not perceive that because you're in high place you need to see a lot more than normal people does all i care about in my job is just a to b trying to get this thing to done service one person he has to service thousands, millions of people. And he has to see things the organization level. That means he can't just sit there and all about himself. Just stuck in power. No time. Literally no time. All right. When you look at, you know, Master Ching Kong, Master Wu Xing, and also other, you know, great venerables and also other great leaders. They are leaders, right? They don't have time. Like me sitting here and thinking, wondering thoughts, it's nothing. For them, they were like 10,000 problems come in from 10,000 different organizations, sometimes outside, sometimes inside. They have to worry about, you know, literally making things floating, you know, making things work. Um, it's also, this is also one way of cultivation, very good cultivation. The focus, the focus, you need to have sharp focus. And, you know, that's how authority is. You're just amazed. You just be inspired. You'd be like, this person is really trying to do good by the organization. You know, trying to repay the kindness of his teacher. So in case of Master Wuxing, he's Master Ching Kong. In case of Master Ching Kong, the three teachers. And in the, in the general scheme of things, Buddha, trying to repay his kindness. And so he has, he has to, he has to, Rather than coerce other, he has to coerce himself in, in the way, right? The other way around. You need to coerce your desire into submission of your rational view, of, of, of your goals, of your noble uh, character. That's how you use force. Only person that you should use force is yourself against your own affliction, right? No one else, all right? Other, other, Outside is just maybe they endangering people. That's common sense. I don't have to say it here. Everyone knows when you're endangering people, obviously you'll be arrested stuff, right? Talking about day-to-day -day stuff. So the second one too, as a superior commanding officer, tolerate war crimes, violence, wanton behavior. Wanton maybe means you know unwholesome behavior, bad stuff, you know, 
maybe in Afghanistan, right? There is commission coming out investigating this kind of unwholesome behavior, uh, maybe uh, disrupting the people's household and stuff like that. Of course, they have their own set of circumstances. In Australia, we have our own special air service commission foul against these people because they are behaving un unprofessional and unethical. In, com in, 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 in this was being exposed by Australian journalists, obviously. Check and balance. So basically, things like that. You know, keep keep in account, keep in check. You know, those are wrong stuff. We all know that. But this case, they talk about a person in charge, in high power, right? They not, not only need to be a leader, they need to be an educator. What is right, what is wrong? You know, what is... Uh, uh, he needs to educate his people, her people, his people, doesn't matter. And then the... Um, Sorry, I, I'm coming back. And then he has to be a leader, he has to be a teacher, he has to be a parental figure or uh, a nurturing, a man, a nurturing figure, you know, a person who cares about beyond their work. He has to be care, how's your family? You know, do you need help? Do you need time off? You know, is everything all right? Are you okay? You know, the mental health stuff as well and your family. Those things really make them touch them, right? And make them run to contribute to this organization you're leading, right? Some might say even, might even die for you in a sense. Um, that's very medieval. Sorry, I watched too much of that. So the main point is the sentiment is there, right? You're willing to give your all because this leader is willing to invest in you, willing to give their his all to you, right? To make you they feel valuable and grow you, investing in you and making you sure you're taken care of in your family, which is your flank. You, you know, your family is taken care of. So of course you can focus. You want to do better. You want to contribute. You put in all your effort. So this is how it works. Authority works. You will naturally want to do what he says, because he will always be in the best interest of you, right? It's like parents. You always have the best interest in you, no matter if they say factually correct or not. You understand they came from that place. You always have a place for their words. Doesn't matter 100% or not. You you always remember that part. You always have the special place for them. Right? No matter what it is. So this second half is lacking. First one is first one is being a leader. Second one is also being a teacher. This fail as a teacher, as an educator. As a teacher, it's not about sitting here talking, not about sitting in a classroom pointing A, B, C, those technical stuff, right? We have technical stuff. We always have to deal with that. The teacher here is like lead by basically role model, basically how do you deal with this tricky situation in terms of, you know, if you um, invading or if you, not invading, I don't want to go into that bubble. If you go into a, on a campaign on someone else's land and happen to, you know, trying to right the wrongs that done to your people and ended up causing a little bit of, not a little bit, a lot of ruckus that caused people's life, life of your own people and life of people in their foreign lands. There's a lot of crap you have to deal with. Sorry for the rude word, but, and, and to deal with properly, wisely, it is an, Xiu Yang is a cultivation. It needs to have that cultivation. Doesn't matter what you're from, what your culture is. You need to have that character. You know, you need to be, you need to be strict on the wrongs. If you loot, well, nowadays it's not that bad, right? But there are cases in in China, right? Who loots, who get his head cut off. Or if you want to loot, you can only loot after, um, maybe like one half or one third, or something like that. Or you cannot, you should not loot common people's uh, property. You know, protect their property and their life, life and property. So those are those are military rules and 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 uni quite universal. If you are a proper army and worthy of respect, because their function is to to be honest, is for peace and order. It might be cheesy, the way I'm saying it, but it is. 
right? Why why would you yeah? The problem right now is put aside all this big stuff. Day to day, you're leading a platoon, you're leading a group, and if you're dealing with someone outside of your comfort zone, of your element, maybe you're in a foreign expeditionary force, like what US have a lot, you need to be very sensitive, right? You have your own culture, your internal military culture, but you also need to respect other people's culture. You need to understand that. And, and you need to maintain that balance. And you can't use emotions and trigger that. You need to use, you need to channel that sentiment in the right way, so that it does not escalate into full violence. Um, I hope Master Jing did Master Jing say that, uh, but it's the same, yeah. 三种关系要搞好 ，Yeah, yeah. 没有念念天念佛的事。Yeah, I think I'll stop it here and probably go for a short、um, five-minute breaks. We'll continue at 9:50. Probably give it half an hour recap, but it's, very, it's quite late right now. Do you guys want to continue next time or? I don't have much recap. I, I'll, I'll should I continue? Because I'll stop this session here. That's that's all I have to say about these two phrases. You know, summary. I'll summarize it. Five minutes. So the summary of these two is、um, it's part of a shamelessness transgression, and to, and and you know if we understand what we do, we have good consequences. We understand that there is no need for us to go this kind of、um, behavior,、uh, um, like looking into other folks, other people's stuff, and because that is waste of time. We need to work on ourselves. Only then we can. Exudes that level of, you know,、um, respect that we yearn for, not by obstructing people, right? And work on yourself means you have to be understanding your weakness, look at it in the face, and understand, you know, covering it up will only faster、um, more wrongdoings means more cancer inside of you. You need to get that out, of the chest, and you need to work a long term plan, long term mindset. Against your habits, those things cannot go away in an instance. So you need to be always be honest, always be open, always be willing to lower yourself a little bit. Be confident of what achievement you have, but also be humble, always open, and learn. There's always a way to improve. You're not Buddha yet, in terms of attainment, full attainment. You are Buddha potential, but you're not full Buddha. And Buddha means perfection. You have not achieved that. I have not achieved that, so we should learn. Always learn, always open up. Never belittle people. Never be、uh, covering up your wrong. And if you expand this to here, same thing. People who can understand themselves, understand the values of being delegation, the values of trust on you, who gave you the power, gave you the appointment in this office, etc., etc., must not use that to. Coerce people in submission. Coerce can come in many ways, legal ways and stuff like that.、It、doesn't have to be violence. So those are wrong stuff. You make people stress and push people. That's not right. It should always be, say, remembering three facets of being a leader in authority. That's how you truly have authority. Number one, being a role model, which is leader. Number, I mean, number one is being a leader to lead in the front. All right. Number two is to be a teacher. To a mentor, you need to show them what is right, what is wrong, standard guidelines, and then you need to role model, role model yourself. You need to actually act in accordance to what you set. Number three is to be a parent, a parent figure, to care, and nurture, take care of what they worry about, understand what they worry about. You need to listen to them, and the concerns they have, the agitation they have. Those are always, always needed. In a good leader, without this tree, there's no leader. It's just a、uh, people who happen to sit on top, and then trying to waste time and energy. Maybe there are flaws, but understanding these three principles makes your job better. If you're in that position, I think that's a better way to put it. Second half is、um, education. Second half is you need to be educating people, 
superior, we need to educate subordinates, especially in terms of not just talk, let's not educate, it's just can making aware. Real education is acting. Maybe a leader of this small group shows you how it's done, you know, in real day-to-day -day situation. That's also another form. Otherwise, this will happen. War crimes, violence, random behaviors, this can translate into civilian setting as well. Those unwholesome behavior, you know, unprofessional behavior, workplace bullying, harassment, right? Sexual harassment, bullying, right? Like indirect, indirect, uh, be, uh, uh, how is it? Indirect uh, negative behavior that, that disrupt others. So as a team leader, you need to show that this is not all right. This line you do not cross. I'm going to give you a cheer an earful if you do that. Right? You can have jokes, you can have teasing and stuff like that. But if it cross that line, we understand it become malicious. Right? Don't need to wait the big boss. I'll 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 come and I'll come and have a talk with you. And then we we will see what, where you want to go. So you set that line and boundary very clearly. Anyone who crossed that line, I already told you three times. Right? Do not do it. If you do it, we already make it very clear in accordance to policy, in accordance to our ethical standards. You have breached it, leave the place. So this is how you build up and you also abide by that. You are very relaxed and happy, but you understand the bottom line. So hard and soft it has to be just nice. Right? Punishment make it very clear because you did not do it what you were warned not to because this is ethically, morally important for the organization to behave like that, for a person to behave like that, right? So that's it. Uh, sense of shame, basically, right? With sense of shame, all this becomes easy to understand, right? And you will work hard to work on yourself. Uh, so before I move on to the summary, um, do you guys have anything else to share? We can, I'll have a short summary, 15 minutes, to be honest. I compress everything. In a short summary, right? So for your benefit, that's it. And I hope I remember. <laughs>